This is the hardest decision I've ever had to make, but maybe showing my journey will help others remember who they are. We are not defined by our circumstances. I know you have a bucket list and so do I. So scared or not, let's take back control of our own destiny because we are worth it. Hey everybody, if we haven't met yet, my name is Carrie. If you have any questions at the end of this video about the first week home of elective amputation with kids or with how to cook or how I sleep or any of those things, please just put them in the comments and I will be happy to answer any of your questions for you. I only post these videos to help people. So if there's anything that I can answer for you, please let me know. So one of the biggest struggles I have had since being home from my amputation is the stairs. I have so many stairs in my house and it's pretty easy going down. And once I'm down, I can pretty much help myself anywhere. I can get to a chair. I can roll around and get a drink. I can sit at the table and eat. I can take myself to the bathroom. Sometimes when I'm downstairs, I actually make it outside, which is really, really nice. I like the sunshine. I like being in the warm weather. I hate being isolated. So this is one of my favorite times. But then at the end of the night, that's when I have to push myself back up the stairs each step. And I'm already tired. I'm already cranky. I'm already in pain. And then when I get to the top of the stairs, then I have to stand up or crawl to the bedroom to actually get in bed. So a lot of times I just stay upstairs and heal. To have the best success rate, my doctor gave me a list of exercises to do and I've been very faithful to do them. Although they do hurt, it's something that's very necessary in order to keep your leg from walking up. Just making my leg go straight and pushing my knee down is one of the hardest things because of the amount of stretching it's doing up under here. And that's one of the things he said that was most important was to make sure that you can bend and stretch out completely your residual limb because the prosthetist needs a certain amount of muscle movement and relaxation in order to work with your limb. So if they give you strict instructions, make sure you follow them. From my bed, I've been able to take myself to the bathroom and to the shower really easily. Once I'm getting in the shower, we have made a few accommodations to make it easier. We took off the shower doors and replaced it with a curtain. We also replaced the shower head with a handheld shower head that I can use to wash in a sitting position. I put this bag over my stitches very, very carefully because they're still very tender and I can't get my residual limb wet for 30 days and I'm only 14 days in. Then what I do is I put the curtain under my leg to keep the water from pouring out all over the floor. One of my secrets is I take my toothbrush and my toothpaste in the shower with me and brush my teeth in the shower so I don't have to stand and do it at the sink. Once I'm finished, I put on my grippy sock to grip the floor so I don't slip. And I also do all of my deodorant, lotions, and potions while I'm sitting on the shower chair before I get up. That way, once I come to the bed, I don't have anything left to do except get dressed. My mom helped me move all of my clothes from the closet to these drawers so that it would be easier for me just to sit on the bed and make a quick reach to get the clothes that I need. Okay, now for my medication. This was one of my biggest questions going into this was how long was I gonna be on medication? And once I get those filled at the doctor, would it be enough to last me in Virginia or will I have to find a doctor here in order to prescribe me more? That's always kind of one of those weird things because they don't know you, they don't know your history. It was a concern of mine, but it ended up, I only needed them nine days. I woke up on day 10 and I forgot to take them. So that kind of told me right there, you don't really need them. And now I've not been taking anything for several days. I don't take Tylenol, I don't take Advil, I don't take aspirin, I take nothing. And the pain is only there at night. At night, it's a whole nother world. Everything changes. For whatever reason, that's when the phantom pains hit. I try to drink as much water as I possibly can throughout the day to try to prevent them. But inevitably, for whatever reason, whenever I lay down at night, and I've seen this across all of the amputee forums, 
that's when they hit and it feels like a bee sting almost and I can tell you the exact toe that it hits or the exact place on my heel or the bottom of my foot or whatever except it's on the missing residual limb which is so weird but I'll lay there and just constantly just jerk and seize up it almost feels like you have one of those tens units um, put on the non-existing limb and it's just zapping it every like six seconds just zap 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 all night long eventually i hold still enough and they start to fade away enough that i can go to sleep but i'm the type of person where i move a lot in my sleep and every time i move it just starts a whole nother chain reaction of this and it's driving me absolutely crazy so if there is something that you have found for phantom pains, please put it in the comments for me. I would really, really appreciate it. Sleeping is also difficult because of all the stitches right now. I would think that the first two weeks would be the hardest because you still have all these stitches. I don't know if you can see, but I have a ton of stitches behind my knee right here from whatever nerve work they did. And then the stitches go from the top all the way down underneath my leg. And so finding a comfortable position is almost impossible because the stitches pull on the sheets and then the phantom pains and being stung by a bee all night. It's just not fun right now. So one of the best things that we did to prepare for this, and we didn't really do it, it was our friends and family. They got together, they love us so much that they filled our freezer full of food and they also gave us all these gift cards so that when those nights come that I'm up here and I can't go downstairs and join them, all my husband has to do is just to order the food, go pick it up or have it delivered, feed the kids, feed me, we crumple up the paper and we throw it away. It has been a lifesaver. So moms, if you're gonna have this done, whether you have help or not, if you have kids, one of the best things I can tell you to do is to gather up gift cards just purchase one every time you go to the grocery store or once a month. Anything will help um, prepare you for this or start making freezer meals and put them in your freezer because that's been really, really easy just to pull something out and stick it in the oven and then all of a sudden food is done. You put the leftovers in Tupperware and have it for lunch the next day. It has been amazing. But on the other hand, one of the things I wish I would have done that I didn't do is strength training on my right leg. I grossly underestimated the amount of power and strength it was gonna take for this leg to keep up. I wish I would have done some sort of single leg squats or yoga or some sort of strength training for this leg. So if you have elective amputation on your lower limb coming up, make sure you strengthen that other leg. And that includes balance. This has taken an incredible amount of balance from just simple tasks like washing my hands. That takes a lot of balance because you can't hold on to anything. Okay, before I show you the up close and personal look at my residual limb, I wanted to say thank you so much for watching this video. If you found value in it, hit the like button or the subscribe because those things make me shine bright in face of the YouTube gods so that they'll put it in front of other people so that maybe they can get the information that they need before they have the amputation. Okay, before I show you, I just have to warn you that it is hairy because I have had a lot of fellow amputees say, don't shave your residual limb because it can cause ingrown hairs. Even though my doctor didn't tell me that, I just thought it was probably pretty good advice that wouldn't hurt anything, so it is hairy. Okay, so here's my limb up close, and even though I can't get it wet, I do rinse it with hydrogen peroxide to make sure everything stays clean and sanitary. So even though it's completely scabbed over, it is nice and clean. And here's the areas that I wanted to show you under here. My doctor has responded and called it superficial necrosis, basically meaning dead skin cells. So all of this area that's black, the nurse said before he answered that it basically comes off like a scab and it's nothing really to worry about. But everything is completely closed up and I have the all clear to remove the stitches, which I'm super thankful for.
Okay guys, that's all for now. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you on the next one.